Let's make planning this year's garden a lot easier with the Planter app. This app is packed full of features. It has companion and combative planting, which are indicated by green and red circles. It has a simple drag and drop interface. It has 80 plus plants and thousands of varieties. All the info is needed to grow veggies, including when to start seeds, transplant and harvest, the ability to create custom plants and varieties, a growing guide with in-depth articles to supplement the quick info in the app, not to mention that you can view it and use it both on your PC and on your mobile device, so you can always be planting your garden on the go. This app is used in my garden year-round to plan the upcoming seasons, reference the last year's seasons so I know when to rotate, and it also helps me to learn more about companion planting using the visual cues. When you create your garden, it's going to be based on the dimensions and each block is going to be a square foot. I've had a lot of fun using this app and the Planter app, which is spelled P-L-A-N-T-E-R, is available in your app store on both Google and Apple. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and plan your garden and use the link below to get a discount on the Planter app. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. So, Batavia, I know that you have an issue with this, and it's kind of a loaded question, but when you're getting ready to start planting for the year, do you often wonder to yourself, like, how much should I be growing of a certain plant or something like that? How much of a vegetable should I be growing? I do, but I hope that it was just a bad connection because you said, I I know you have an issue with, and it was like a a pause. And it's like, uh, I know you have issues. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I do, but I'm kind of letting go and letting God this year. But yeah, I have had and continue to have issues with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you have to excuse me, Shari Dog is on the mend. She had a case of gastritis, and uh, she's now back to normal, and she's barking at everybody. So, mm. welcome back, Shari Dog. But, um, yeah, I, I think for me, <laughs> it's come down to, like, different levels within my gardening experience. And based off of what we do with the produce and stuff like that... And I don't want to sound like a broken record. And it's very early in the episode to be saying this. <laughs> but, um, you know, depending on how you use the produce, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And knowing, having skin in the game and knowing how much a certain plant will produce really helps us to decide what we're growing. You know, how much of something to grow. Yeah, I can't. And this is not in any particular order, but. I can't express enough how important it is, how helpful it is to me. Let me speak for for myself to have pictures and videos, even short videos of things in my garden. If you're the kind of person that takes copious notes, then this is, you know, it doesn't matter if you're taking pictures or not. But I'm not, you know, I got like a dozen notebooks that have empty pages. Um, It's really helpful for me as I continue to grow things for the first time to understand when they produce and how much they're producing in my garden. Um, And then I think not necessarily just a comment, I'll say we kind of talk about how much to grow. And it's under the assumption that whatever the things are, they're all going to do well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You always walk into the season like, this is it. This is the year. No yeah. issues. And that yeah. doesn't work out. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I never walk into the season like that. Uh, but I walk into the season with, oh, I'm going to plant X to get X. And it's, it leaves no room for the error. And, you know, we were just talking about it. I said, had 12, I started 12 jalapeno plants. And a couple of years ago, I was starting that many just in case they didn't make it to outside, right? You know, and 12 jalapeno plants, I'm confident that probably all 12 12 of them are going to be transplantable, you know, but I don't know how many peppers they're going to produce, however many I plant. Yeah. You know, and I'm not, I'm not going to plant all 12. At least I don't think I am. Um, and so, like, you have to kind of 
then do the math of how many are you expecting then based on how many you're expecting you want how many should you plant you know and then are you planting with some room for error like it's this whole thing that's just one vegetable yeah it is (laughs) and i mean and you're you're talking to i mean i would assume that we're talking to people with limited garden space Mm -hmm. so you know we got to take all that into account yeah and i mean hold on yeah i mean you know you and i have on the larger side of gardens, but we're still limited in mm-hmm, what we can grow. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like we have an acre and you're like, all right, I got to try and fill this acre up. You know, God, if I could fill an acre up, I'd be good to go. But, um, you know, it's the same thing. Now I will say for me, one thing that's definitely helped is like growing the same varieties year after year for a while. Like I learn what each variety will produce. And that's really helped us too, because we, mm-hmm. We know roughly what to expect from, I mean, if you want to stay on jalapenos, for instance, like we grow the, grow the, um, Craig's Grande Jalapeno. So we've been saving the seeds. I think this is the third year we've been saving the seed from it. And, um, we know that we're, you know, we get a larger jalapeno off of it. Mm -hmm. I know that it's about a hundred times hotter than you get at the store, which is something to be said for, (coughs) excuse me. And I also know like about what time of year they start to produce. So I know what to expect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, once you start to get that under control, then it really helps. Because like tomatoes, like cherry tomatoes, you you harvest them first, you know, and then you get your determinants, your indeterminants and all that stuff. So it can, it's definitely, there's a trick to it. And I did a video last year on Sandy Bottom Homestead on YouTube. Where I was talking about, um, you know, how I decided how many of certain tomato plants to grow. And I did that because I was I was struggling at the time. And I did it again this year, like finding places for the tomatoes to go into my yard. Because I don't like to eat tomatoes. Shocker. Mm. Not fresh. But we can them. And so we need a lot in order to can them and make it worth our while. So that's why we, we're we trying to do these kinds of things and learn about each variety. So like we grow Roma tomatoes pretty much year after year. And we know that they're going to come on hard and heavy and then they're going to die off. And then we need mm-hmm. to start over or do whatever. And we know what we're about. We're going to get off of each plant roughly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's um. so I'm going to agree and then use pictures to um to illustrate that point ha ha uh so last year i bought seconds um after a pretty bad tomato year in my garden and i think it was like a 25 or 35 25 or 30 pound box so seconds i bought them from the farmer's market and they are uh, tomatoes that aren't beauties they're not winning the beauty pageant right they may be you know a distant (laughs) runner-up and so there may be blemishes yeah Yeah, there there may be bruises um basically every tomato that i grow yeah right Uh, (laughs) generally i have a garden full of seconds when i do grow tomatoes (laughs) and so and, and they are sold at a um lower price than you would buy the pristine tomatoes, right? And so I made a bunch of dishes, like all of my tomato sauce that I froze, I didn't can based on the recipe that I use. Um, And then I did a couple of other dishes with them. It was from that box. So that's super helpful. You know, the idea of I was able to get some things to preserve, even with my tomato year last year was really important. I don't know how many uh, tomato plants they pull those tomatoes off of yeah but i have a reference from like two years ago which i had a similar box you know and i'm it's a guesstimation i'm saying okay i know what i had two plants that produced that right you know and so that may be the thing that may be the magic number i think two maybe three um roma like paste like tomato plants could be the magic number for me in my space But it took me some years to figure that out, right? It took me the images. It took me, like, I I may or may not have even kept track of it. Because one of the things with 
picking up those seconds is I get them all at one time. You know, <laughs> like, you know, they're in a box, right? And so that's going to be a gauge. And I'm going to put that in the column of, I think I have a good idea for preservation purposes. Uh, my salsa preservation is still to be determined because I don't like to use paste tomatoes for the recipe you share with me. Um, but I'm going to put, again, paste tomatoes in the column of, I, I think I got it figured out. And that's a huge win, right? Yeah. Now, what we figured out about our paste tomatoes is we need to go higher, more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this year, at one time, we've got five paste tomatoes going at once. Mm-hmm. But like I said in that video, I've got one cherry tomato plant. And I don't need any more than one cherry yeah. tomato plant. Like, good God, I don't need any. There's That's the last thing I need is more than one cherry tomato plant. I've so, been researching growing a half of a cherry tomato yeah. plant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy. So, it, you know, but it's just one of those things where it's like, I know, like when it comes to my tomatoes, I need this many of this, this many of this, and then anything else I can grow extra great. I'll use mm-hmm. them, we'll, whatever, with the extra produce. But mm-hmm. just to get by on what we need, we know that moving forward, we can do this. And I mean, like the indeterminate tomatoes we're going to grow this year, um, which may be my last year growing indeterminate tomatoes. Don't know yet. We'll find out this year. This is the year. They're on the chopping block. Um, you know, we can still can those. There's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, we can do that as well. But um, it's a different experience canning those. I mean, the idea of a paste is it's meatier, yeah. right? And the indeterminates, which are are typically not your paste tomatoes, just produce a different type of tomato. But that's what I use for my salsa, an indeterminate tomato. Yeah, regular, pineapple. non, mm-hmm. yeah. So for me, I, I'm not a connoisseur in tomatoes, so I can't really tell the difference. You know what I mean? So I'm not really mm-hmm. like, that. I'm not yeah. like all like, uh, but we've grown the Romas for so long. They come on so fast and heavy that we enjoy it. And I enjoy growing them. So there is that aspect of it. But, um, you know, last year, no, for the past two years, I think I've grown six to eight pepper plants. And what I've learned off that is that is nowhere near enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. nowhere near enough so this year we have like 20 maybe 30 tomato or pepper plants spaced mm-hmm. around our garden so you know we're we've figured out like hey we need more peppers we need more tomatoes so we're able to kind of fit that box as we need it you know what i mean but it just takes it, it takes time to figure that out you know how much each one's going to get you yeah the um the amount of things that are swirling in my head when we talk about this kind of thing and so i said at the onset like you know i I normally rely on pictures um but i'm like a half a season away from like needing to break out a book and really document like fight the freedom of doing what i want when and putting a plant in whenever and yada 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 it's it's like creating the greatest heartburn in my garden life yeah um you know the the wonder of it all and you know you you look and you say all right when is this thing going to produce especially with expanding to three season gardening like that, that information becomes critical for me. Yeah. You know, and now I have a pretty good idea of this broccoli that I planted, you know, when it's going to produce. And now I can decide what's going to come next after that. Um, you know, I, I look at, and the cauliflower is going to, for me, probably be ready after the broccoli. Right. You know, so that's absolutely going to impact my, um, my garden plan but specifically how much i want to grow of it so i'll probably be done eating broccoli by the time my cauliflower is ready so it's not like i'm kind of balancing both of those vegetables at the same time right let's at least hope that that's not been my experience the last few years well and so go ahead i was just gonna say so now i can say all right you know how much or how little cauliflower do i want to plant you know i'm still still so Ben is already at fall crops, you know, I'm still like getting spring stuff in, you know, he's, he's well into summer for his garden. Uh, so we'll I've already be planted about, my fall garden. Yeah. Right. We'll be speaking of different vegetables. His, he's already planted his fall garden of 2024. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, there's going to be more to come about this on the YouTube and here as well about my plan for fall moving forward. But I'm glad you brought up broccoli 
because that's another one where I, I, did, I grew a lot of broccoli and I spaced it out, but I'm hammering down the timing of it because it can be tricky in my area. Mm-hmm. But what I'm also realized is like, and I knew this with cauliflower, as soon as I started growing it, I don't need to grow, but maybe three plants mm-hmm. to fulfill whatever desire I have to cauliflower because I just don't care for it that much. I have one recipe that I care for and that's it. So there was never a need for me to grow 10 cauliflower plants. I never really needed to figure that out. I knew I wanted to grow it. I knew I enjoyed it a little bit, but my whole gardening and nutritional experience does not weigh in on the cauliflower. So I knew way ahead of time that that was the case. And then the broccoli, like I figured out this spring, like, I need to grow about four times more broccoli than I normally do. Mm -hmm. I need to grow really 10 times more because that's, we eat a lot of it, you know? And that's why I've been trying these Brussels sprouts for so many years, you know, is because we eat a lot of Brussels sprouts. So we want to grow more Brussels sprouts, you know? So, I mean, we grow a lot of like turnips and stuff, but that's just because we can. If we had something else to grow in its space, we would more than likely 100% grow something else and cut down on our turnip harvest dramatically, Mm -hmm. you know? You know, I'm surprised that, um, you know, for your past vegan life, vegetarian, uh, pescatarian, combo life, you know, cauliflower is like the new kale. Like every vegan restaurant you go to, vegetarian restaurant you go to, they're going to have some version of cauliflower that you don't necessarily recognize. Everything from like the chicken wings that that you create from cauliflower, the cauliflower rice, cauliflower pizza dough. You know know what? It all tastes like cauliflower. (laughs) (laughs) I was talking to my uncle about cauliflower and I don't even know how it came up but we were talking about cauliflower and he's like well let me know how it does because it's so expensive in the store and he's so right like we were talking about cauliflower and broccoli and I'm like it's like take a mortgage out to buy cauliflower I had a cauliflower in the store um but that's a, a good example of um the things that factor into how much you're going to grow right you know so Brussels sprouts, sprouts for me, it's just, it's a crop that I've only successfully grown once. And I missed the window for a lot of my Brussels sprouts last year, right? Yeah. You know, and so there is that curiosity. I think one of the things that's really powerful too, when it comes to how much you grow is starting your own seeds, right? You know, so you could start seeds and then you, since you sell them, you can take out of, you know, if you start, I don't know. 24 of them a bunch of six packs you could pull out three of them and be like that's all i want to plant that's exactly what we do yeah you could sell the rest when you're buying them from a store you're either going to pay up the kazoo for one single plant if you're buying it as a transplant or even i mean otherwise you're buying a six pack you know so if you're instead starting them from seed on your own again you have that control and it's really 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 hard for me it's hard for me to throw away a lettuce start that I've started. It's hard for me to, you know, pull a volunteer lettuce plant. Like it's a seed. Yeah. I don't even know if, like, what's the monetary value of the one seed that I planted last year to create the head of lettuce that yeah. then went to seed and then created a hundred different seeds in my garden that flew around. Like I just can't stop myself. So anyway, um, lettuce is a good example of, I still haven't in all these years figured out how, t- how much is too much? How much is just the right amount? How much is too little? Yeah, you know, we grew too I much. I grow too much of it every year. Just We to- grew too much yeah. lettuce this year, too. Um, a lot of it went to bolt, and we still have a couple heads left that I'm trying to get through so I can plant my s- sweet potatoes. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the same thing. It's like, how much of this do we need? Mm-hmm. And it's you know it it does take some figure and so yeah i do sell seeds seedlings not seeds um you know starter plants and it's nice because i don't really have to worry about you know i'm not really super focused like what's your profit margin are you at this and you know you should never smoke your own supply you know what i mean you know what i'm saying smoky so for me it's like i can just take whatever i want that i've started yeah. and plant it and it does help but it's also crippled me in a sense as well because I don't have to worry about 
planning a certain amount to plant. I just plant how much I think I'm going to sell and then I'll do mm-hmm. a, a rough plan and I'll say, okay, well, I need this many extra. Mm-hmm. And invariably what happens is I'll have some left over and I don't want to throw them out. You know, we don't sell out of everything every year. And so then we start plugging and playing stuff in different areas. And that's why my garden is starting to grow more and more. But it's just, it's part of it. You know, I don't mind throwing them away, but at the same time, and that's how we ended up with so many peppers this year, because I had a certain amount planned. And I was like, you know what? As I started, I sat back and looked at it. I was like, every year, I always wish we grew more peppers. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so it's like, this is the year that we're going to grow more peppers significantly more you know because i'm tired of paying for them at the store first of all here here for everything that i have paid for all of my pepper seed seedlings that i have in dirt pots growing them and everything the cost of those would be like nine bell peppers at the store (laughs) you know and we have 30 plants in the ground so if i get 27 bell peppers we're in the green you know what i mean that's such a cool way of let me write that down now so I can use that in one of my videos. <laughs> These <laughs> one, two, three, four, skip ahead to thirty. It's pay for my garden, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I um it's interesting because peppers is one of those things that because that's one of the things I've been able to start so I mean generally it's not easy, meaning, you know, I've had the last couple of years, um, you know, um, aphids indoors which has just been the biggest pain in my you know what um but once i get them outside they have year over year done so well for me you know i'm drawn to the thing that does well right you know and so you never see you know this no one has a cart full of peppers you know at the grocery store so i get the question a lot like what do you do with all of those and again i come from a long line of folks that freeze things and even as a prepared dish if they freeze really well you know and so um i look at that and say i could probably almost never have too many yeah. You know, but I'm always going to be in a position where I could have more. I still last year, I wanted to do more um, roasted peppers to preserve and it didn't work out the way I wanted. And that's OK, because, you know, now I know I can increase the number by X. Um, for me, I probably have less space when it comes to something like peppers. Because that's I think the bottom line is, do you have the space to grow how many of X? Yeah, well, you got to start prioritizing Mm-hmm. And so this year, I'm glad you brought up canning because we're about to start talking about that now. Um, after I say this, uh, I got two things to say first. One is I hate the question of what are you going to do with all that? And my answer is going to be whatever the hell I want to do with it. So don't ask me what I'm going to do with everything that I grew because I'm going to eat it. I'm going to preserve it or I'm going to give it away. But the other thing too is like this year we're growing, we're gonna, we're attempting to grow corn. I forgot to check it this morning, um, and I'm dedicating an entire bed to the corn, 100, you know, 32 square feet, hoping to get. Uh, I think I planted 40 to 50 um, corn plants, whatever, waiting for them to germinate. But that eliminated a big space because I hadn't done that in the past. You know, I did maybe five and epic fail. So, um, you know, this year's hopefully will be a little bit different, but moving into that, you know, you start talking about canning and preserving and freezing, and then you're like, okay, this is where it gets serious because now you need enough to make it worth your while. You know what I'm saying? Like there is no point in getting a whole canning set up to can one jar of tomatoes. Just go to the store and buy a can of tomatoes, you know, um, And that's where, like for us, where I was saying, like, you know, we might not be growing indeterminate tomatoes after this year because the determinants come on fast and heavy all at once. So we know that Mm -hmm. we get enough to harvest and we may not not harvest them that day and then can them that day, but we'll harvest them over a week and then we'll do a big canning day and then we'll harvest them and we'll do another big canning day. And so that really adds up the numbers of plants that you need to have dramatically in my mind. Mm -hmm. I think um, a part that I am uber comfortable with, although if there was a fast forward button, I would hit it. 
every plant, every vegetable, every herb, everything you're putting into your garden doesn't serve the same in purpose, right? You know, so you said you need to grow enough to uh, make it worth your while for a lot of things, but not for everything I grow. Right. You know, right. Um, and so I look at like um, sweet peas, snap peas are both of those are good examples of that's a little taste is fine. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like I, I don't need to grow like a huge amount. Um, and when I say I'm at the very beginnings, I think of trying to figure out what I want to continue to grow and how much of the thing you know, to make me feel fulfilled in that garden year. Right. Right. You know, to make me feel like I can look back and say this was successful. Right. You know, and so I like to be sitting down shucking a whole bunch of corn ears, uh, hit ears of corn. Right. You know, um, but I'm also OK with that if I get a half a dozen ears, you know, um, so that's a thing. And you know why? Because I've not yet preserved it. Now, if you if I find out that preserving my homegrown corn is easier than I think, then watch out. Yeah, Watch out, yeah. tomatoes. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, we're hoping to get 60 ears of corn off of our plants. And so the question my wife says, she asked me the question, what are you going to do with all that corn? I said, you're going to be eating a heifer. You, I mean, <laughs> what do you want? You know what I mean? Like, you got to eat it. And Wait, it, did you say two beds of corn or did you do one bed of corn? One bed. And okay, the variety yeah. we're using is known to give you two ears per plant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're not expecting every every plant to give us two ears. But if you think about it, you eat some fresh corn, you can some corn, you know, all that stuff. Because then she's like, well, would you sell it? And I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with 60 years? Of, I mean, who am I going to sell 60 years of corn to? Yeah. You know what I mean? That'll be gone in a heartbeat. So it's like, no, I'm just going to can it, freeze it, eat it, and then be done with it. Mm-hmm. And we'll have corn throughout the year. Now, a lot of people scoffed at me when I said this. Um, we'll take, we. what I plan to do is take an ear of corn. You know how you can get the little, the corn nibblers mm-hmm. at the store and just cut the corns, the ears of corn in threes. And freeze them that way. And then we got corn nibblers. You know what I mean? So where we had 60 ears of corn, now we'll have 180 nibblers if we wanted, you know? Yeah. So. yeah. Well, putting a, a ear of corn on the grill, a full ear of corn on the grill says summer. Yes. To me, you know, not so much nibblers, but when it's December or January, well, you may still be putting, you know, turning the grill on. I'm not one of those that's, you know, in a sweatshirt, a hat, a coat, and shorts, you know. Yeah, that's what I do. Shoveling a space uh, to get to the grill and, and putting some food on. But anyway, uh, I think that's a great example, though. The nibblers, you can get a small taste of of uh, summer. You can put, if you got some type of soup, you can put some ears of corn in that, if yep. that's your thing, if that's what the recipe calls for, or you want to add to it. There are a bunch of different <clears throat> things. And also to note, the quantity you're growing this year doesn't have to be the quantity you grow next year. Yeah, we'll see. I expect it to continue to be the quantity every year. Of everything? No, of the corn. Okay, no, I meant like uh, for your garden. Oh, yeah, no, so it, we yeah. change every year too. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so, I mean, it's like I said one year, I remember I came on here and I was like, I'm tired of eating butternut squash, we're not growing it this year. Mm-hmm. And then we grew it the next year. And then, we, you know, we, we still got two left from last year, so we, we're not growing it again this year. And, you know, we definitely fluctuate like that. Because, I mean, it's not like we love it. It's not like I'm like, oh, thank God I got butternut squash today. I'm so happy. You know, it's like I, I can go a while without eating it. And if I want one, I can go to the store and get it. Now, if the day came when the store wasn't there, that's a different story. Papa Bear's garden would look completely different, but that's a different. We, we'll get into that in another show. Well, before we we skip over that, it's um, <laughs> <laughs> breaking news. No, I um. I fight probably if I'm in the garden six days a week, four of those days, I fight the like deal with what you have. You know, you don't have, you know, 10 acres deal with this now. This is where you are. Like I fight that urge. Um, And 
it's funny because it's a gift and a curse for having the size garden that we have. Like clearly it's a gift, you know, but the curse is it's not small enough for you to limit yourself just at a necessity, you know? So when I first started gardening, like I only had 30 feet by four feet, period, hard stop. You know, like I wasn't then putting food in containers, you know, I was worried about putting my flowers in containers. And so this was the space. There was no, well, actually that uh, maybe a couple of years into it, my grandfather was growing collard greens on the side of the garage, which is a whole different conversation. But anyway, uh, so I had, I was limited. So there wasn't like, you know, the world is your oyster, right? Like I wasn't growing for a quantity of X, Y, and Z. But as soon as you start expanding your garden and you start realizing the possibilities of what you can do, you know, on your balcony, on your back porch, you know, in your front yard, in your backyard, then you start wanting to increase the types of things you're growing. And then of course the quantity Yeah. for the first time, probably in many years, as we were talking, I had like this glimpse of two crops, Think about how much of any two things I could grow if I dedicated my entire garden to just two things. Yeah, exactly. And you, you, you'd be good. You know yeah. what I mean? You'd be golden. I don't, I don't know that I'd be as satisfied. It's unfortunate because I'll never know. I'll never be able to do that. You know. <laughs> I think the key is is to like take a step back and look at your diet and look at what you really enjoy and lean into that stuff. And, and that's where I would start, like with the broccoli and cauliflower. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. to me, it was a no brainer. Like I've always grown way less cauliflower than I have broccoli always. Mm-hmm. But once you started canning and freezing and drying and stuff like that, then it kind of took it to another level. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because then it was like, all right, now we've got to have enough for this, that. And I remember when I first started preserving food, um, we actually, the first time we did it, I, I got a dehydrator and was going to make apple chips. So we went to an apple orchard and picked apples and they were like, you know, do you want to grow uh, pick a basket or a bushel? And I was like, oh, we want three bushels. And they're like, what? And I was like, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to spend all this time to dry it, like I'm going to make it worth my while. And that was like, I had no skin in the game at that point. You know what I mean? I had, I think it was like 60 bucks or something for three bushels. And I mean, dude, we were eating apples until the cows came home. We everything we made with it, but that was like our first foray into that. And I really saw, like, first of all, how much you need to preserve it, and then also what your options were, how they opened up when you had more than you knew what to do with. Because we had no anticipation of making applesauce, and we wanted to make a jar of apple butter, and we ended up with thirty jars of apple butter. You know what I mean? So it's like it kind of led into that. It's like the other day we went and uh, we went to a farm down the road from us and picked strawberries. So we don't grow strawberries anymore. We just go to the you pick farm and we pick our strawberries and make our jelly for the year. And we made our 10 cans of jelly or jam. Let's be specific. And, um, you know, we'll do that for the blueberries. Like we eat our blueberries fresh, but we'll go pick the blueberries and make cans out of that. But we realize like what it takes in order to satisfy your need for that. And it's a lot, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Strawberries. It's such a great example of that. I pulled some strawberries out of the, um, some out of the garage at a couple of containers and I'm like, damn it. You know, like, like, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to make it. These poor little things. My strawberry plants are leggy. How about that? Anyway, um, how much a, a plant produces is such an important factor as well. So earlier on, we said, like, we're kind of assuming like everything does well, but then some things do well, but they only <clears throat> produce so much. You know, so right. strawberries are a really good example of that. And I would have never thought strawberry a single strawberry plant produces as little as it does yeah i've grown strawberries for probably on and off for like 10 or more years and there is always that moment of like wow this is super sweet this is what a strawberry is supposed to taste like and because you know 
strawberries you buy commercially are just so disappointing. So, you know, you juxtapose what you've grown, the three strawberries you've grown to what you buy in the carton and the expense of it. And you're like, this is winning, you know, but I probably get maybe a pint, maybe two pints of strawberries from, you know, each year, yeah. you know. And so you look at it and you say, do I have the space? Do I want to dedicate the space in my garden for the pint or two of strawberries? Is that worth it for me? Right. Similar to this sweet peas. If I got a pint of sweet peas, you couldn't tell me anything. They were they're just that good for my garden where that would be satisfying enough. I don't need 20 gallons. Yeah. Right. You know, I would eat that much, but I don't need that. It's one of those things like it's almost a novelty. So that's where you and I are different. You you were different when it comes to that particular vegetable or like sweet peas all. in particular. Like, yeah, I'm not going to grow sweet peas for a pint. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. You know, I, I need I more that. than that. You know, it's it's an all or nothing type deal. Like the amount of effort to shell them, I need I need to make it worth my while. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. I'm not convinced how well they keep. I'm not convinced how well they freeze. Like, will the magic be gone? That's the reason why I'm okay with like, like I'm I'm grabbing them and running, you know. Well, you buy them from the store frozen. Well, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I buy from the store. I buy jalapenos from the store and they taste much better than the jalapenos I ever pickle at home. I told you I'm on year five of that (laughs) crap. Six. Year six. Well, this will be year six. Yeah. I've had five years of crappy pickled jalapeno peppers. So and, there's that. <laughs> yep. And then this is going to be another crappy year for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm not. Uh, I do things like cowboy candy that that's exactly what I want. But I mean, it's a pound of sugar. I wish Probably I had a dollar every time a- I heard you say cowboy candy. Yeah. A pound of sugar. I use jalapenos in my... Um, and my salsa, wonderful. Um, but I'm, it's not going to be year six because I'm not pickling them. I'm done. Well, well let, let me go back Which to Which also the, impacts the amount of jalapenos I grow. Let me go back to the pepper situation, too, because uh, last year or the year before, um, we had some... I don't know what happened with the peppers. They just They got really crappy. The plants, I don't know if they got a disease or an insect or whatever, but it dramatically cut down on our harvest for it. Where I don't think we got a handful of peppers. I think it was Which a year. Type? Uh, sweet peppers. Mm-hmm. So that's why we did this year. And I told my wife, I was like, dude, I'm just going to plant a bunch of peppers. And I was like, if we have some die off, fine. Like it doesn't matter anymore. But then, you know, you start looking into like spacing of these plants too, like appropriate spacings. And you, f- you can put a lot into you know, a a garden bed of certain vegetables. You know what I mean? Like peppers, you can Mm -hmm. pack in pretty tight. Tomatoes, Mm -hmm. you can't, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's like I have people and when they come and they buy uh, seedlings from me, I'll talk to them. And a lot of people are newer. uh, And so they don't really know exactly what's going on. And, you know, what I tell them is I'm like, well, how, how big is your garden? And they'll tell me and I'm say, okay, well, if you're buying this and you really like this, you can put in, like somebody came and bought some onion seedlings from me. I'm like, look, if you have a four by eight bed, you can put in like over a hundred onions in that four by eight bed. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, you can pack in some onions. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you can really get down to it. And it's like, people don't understand that. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you can really add a lot like kale, lettuce, all these things. You can really pack them in tight and get a lot out of a small area. You know, um, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to plug my YouTube channel a lot, but I did a video the other day about, you know, how much I had harvest. I haven't been to the grocery store to buy vegetables in six weeks now. And we've only been harvesting out of two four by eight beds, essentially. Mm-hmm. Like if you start taking all the pieces of the beds and putting them together, it ends up being two four by eight beds. That's a lot to be said about that. You know, now we have nine beds, but they're growing at different stages and different crops mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, you know, once you start doing that kind of thing, you can figure out like I can really grow a lot of food. Just depends on what food I'm growing and how much of that I want to eat. You know, like we grew one row of kale. Dude, I don't need to grow more than two or three plants of kale. Well, I think um, a great example of how you can take what you described and apply it to you is like, what's the percentage of vegetables that you all eat in each meal? Ballpark. 
of us. Mm-hmm. Um, 50%. Okay. Great. Great number as well. 50% of the meals that you all eat contain vegetables and in the last six weeks, you've gotten them all from your garden. Right. Right. If that's the way that my diet is then I'm golden, you know, if I've done similar things to, that you have when it comes to planting. Um, if I eat more vegetables, then you may, maybe I should be planting in more space. Maybe I should be timing it where I'm harvesting in more space. If I eat less vegetables, I could really be winning, you know, when it comes to thinking about what I can do for my garden. I think, you, you know, you look at something like pick a summer month, you know, like June, If you can look back and say all of the vegetables, you and I have talked about eating completely from There's only nine days in in summer in June. Hmm? There's only nine days of summer in June. Come on. Oh, yeah. yeah, So so if you you look at, um, like we've done like the August challenge, like eat everything from your garden, like eat a meal that's only from your garden. And there's something to say, because the first time I heard it, it was four weeks. Now it's two weeks later and six weeks. Like, I think that's really important. You know, yeah. like, can I look and say I'm able to eat from vegetables from my garden solely for two weeks even, I think is a win. If you go to the grocery store once or twice a week, I mean, excuse me, uh, either once a week or every two weeks, to basically say you didn't have to buy any vegetables i think that's winning yeah we had a so we had somebody i had somebody come over about a month ago and i called her up and i was like hey do you want some vegetables yeah like well you have to come right now and come get them because i'm in the garden so she came by brought her daughter i hope she's listening to this and um i don't know how the conversation come up but her daughter said something like why is it so serious? It's just food. And I was like, oh, my God. How old is the daughter? She's 14. Oh, And yeah. her mom, and I'm good friends with both of them. Her mom was like, you just said that to the wrong person. <laughs> and I was like, there has been times in your life when you had no access to food. And you're really going to sit here and ask me why I'm so serious about it? Like, come you on. You could even feed yourself. No, yeah. sorry. <laughs> so, I, you know, <clears throat> ended up giving them a, a lot of greens and stuff like that and they were very appreciative and i mean the thing is is it's important to know like yeah we we haven't been in six weeks to the store to get produce but we've also been eating the same thing for six weeks Mm -hmm. and it does get old but that's okay what makes me so special that i need to get something that's totally out of season or something like because truth be told like I'm no longer eating collards. I won't eat any collards again until November. I'm, you know, I'm running out of lettuce. Like these things are coming to an end. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, you know, I've got a whole bed that's nothing. I've got two beds that are nothing but potatoes. So at that time period, we're going to be eating a lot of t- potatoes, hopefully, or maybe not. We might space them out and eat them over a period of time, but it'll be supplementing in. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we grew two beds is because we knew, one, I wanted to save seed potatoes, two, I wanted my son to grow them, and three, we wanted enough to be able to not have to buy potatoes from the store. So we don't eat a lot of potatoes, but <clears throat> because they store well, so here's the, the last category, because they store well, we know that we can eat a handful of potatoes once or twice a week and have them last us a couple months mm-hmm. going into it. You know what I mean? So that's just one less thing that we have to purchase, just like the onions. One less thing. We haven't bought garlic in a year. Mm-hmm. We won't have to buy garlic this year, you know? So you're just chipping away at this constantly. I kind of feel like that's the note I want to end on. That That's it. That's most of us. I'm going to venture and say most of us are chipping away. Yeah. Most of us aren't, you know, completely replacing the grocery store with what we're pulling out of our gardens, right? You know, um, most of us aren't necessarily even eating a particular vegetable only from our garden. There's some things that, like, I haven't bought, maybe if I've gone to a restaurant or something, but I haven't purchased collard greens. I can't even remember. I rarely, I'm trying to remember the last time I purchased kale from the store, and it's something that I'm not eating 52 weeks out of the year, 
you know. Right. Um, I definitely can. If I'm going to cook it, I definitely can freeze it, you know, but I feel like I get enough of it out of my garden. Tomatoes, I buy and they're terrible, but I still buy them during the off season, right? Off season for me, at least. Um, so I think that it's not, it doesn't have to be about replacing everything. So when you say how, you know, how much should you be planting? How much should you be growing? Some vegetables you may want to, to grow the entire amount that you ever eat for that from this year to next year. And other vegetables, you just may want to enjoy them while they're growing in your garden. And <clears throat> that's it. You know, right. that's going to dictate how much you grow, how many plants, you know, how long you leave those plants in your garden. Cause there's that. I think we generally talk about, you know, the, the plant stays there until it's done producing. You know, I know that you were, were like um, hardcore about pulling things out of your garden. We talked about that a lot a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you're generally still that same guy. Um, but, you know, you look at sometimes, you know, like I said this year, and we'll see if I do it. My kale starts to just get overrun by aphids at some point in the summer. Yeah. And I kind of feel like I've done okay the last two years and starting them from seed. I think I'm not going to try to keep it all summer long. You know, um, I'm going to basically get prepared to a couple of years ago. I planted it in September and was able to enjoy it for the rest of the year. You know, so maybe that two month period, maybe it's okay to have a break from it as an example. Right. Lettuce is clearly something that forces your hand and you end up doing that in most of our garden spaces. Well, and I mean, lettuce is an easy one to grow, too. So I think mm-hmm. it's and it's, you know, most gardeners enjoy a fresh salad. Mm-hmm. So um, it is a damn shame that not all ingredients of your traditional salad grow in the same season. Yeah. But yeah. we won't crack that nut again. Yeah. Um, that's been talked about. That one of my favorites times. is kind of a roasted. Um, the fixings are roasted, like roasted um, broccoli, roasted carrots. You know, maybe a little bit of sliced onion, some fresh lettuce. I generally add cucumbers and tomatoes to everything, you know, but you may want to add some olives in there, like those kinds of things. Like I could have an enjoyable salad during the fall or the early, maybe late spring before I get my tomatoes. Um, now, am I going to be eating this salad two or three times a week? Probably not. I'm yeah. probably not growing that much of those things, but there's something to think about. You know, it'd be an interesting exercise. Take um. If you're serious about growing food, and if you're listening to the show, I'm going to assume that you are. But for all of us, like the first day of spring or pick a day, you know, within each season and take a picture of your meal. And then in summer, take a picture of your meal and in fall and winter and see how it changes throughout the year of the fresh produce that's on your plate. I think that'd be interesting to see because I've been thinking about this a lot lately as we come into, um, you know, tomatoes, cucumbers and peppers are, you know, the main three, at -hmm. least in my garden. You know, it's like right now, it's like just grab a salad, need it. But in a couple months, it's not going to be that way. It's going to be, you know, you're going to see these vegetables on there. And then in the fall, you'll start to see this and in the winter we'll you'll start seeing like roots and stuff on our plates and stuff like that. And so it'd be interesting to compare those three different or those, I guess four times a year, what you're growing, what you're eating based off of what you grew. I guarantee you'll start seeing like in the winter, you'll start seeing like squash soups and pumpkin soups mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, salads in the spring and bruschetta in the summer and, fresh watermelon and all this stuff, but it would be interesting to see the the flow through the year of your, and I think it'd give you a pretty good snapshot of what you're doing. I mean, it has to be real. Don't make like a special dish. Like this is the one I'm going to take a picture of. Yeah, like, a, yeah. you know, like on an average day, just take a picture of it. It would be interesting to see. I think it could be an awesome <clears throat> set of visuals for one, what one space can produce. Yeah. But, uh, I like that a lot. I'm going to do it. I'll, Me too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to remember it and post it all. And I guarantee I'll forget to do the summer one, but how I'll many, do the spring I'm one. I'm trying to figure out how many more days I have in spring. I technically uh, have about two months from when we're recording this. Yeah, in spring, like the twenty something <coughs> of June. Twenty first. Mm-hmm. So you have one month and twenty seven days. Mm-hmm. That's quick Rain Man math for you. 
I'm proud of you. And I can't even do it quick enough to to <laughs> check whether or not you're accurate. I'm just That's why I said it. that. So I just threw you off. So I can't be proven wrong. We both wrong here, but that's just the way it's going to have <laughs> Somebody to be. Somebody listening is like, he's wrong. <laughs> but, but you don't know what today is. So you can't say that he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. <laughs> we aren't recording this on the day you're listening. Yeah. So. Um, I think on that note, I think it's a good place to remember that you got to figure out what you like to eat and what you want to do with the produce. It's like a a weird conversation because it's like there's no definitive answer. But you also have to uh, recognize that your garden may change what you like. And just like sometimes, whether it's store bought or otherwise, you know, you're sitting down to a meal and you're not loving it. Sometimes it's like that from the garden, too. Dude, I feel like you're on the pulpit. You need to start pounding your fist I'm and yelling at I'm trying to tell us. you. I'm trying to tell you. Because, you know. Get it so clapping here. At the end, at, during spring, what we've eaten, I grew a lot of bok choy. Mm-hmm. I, I saw. I, I grew a lot of bok choy, everybody. And I'm going to tell you, um, I didn't expect it to do well, and it did fabulous. Mm-hmm. So we ate a lot of bok choy. <clears throat> now, I think we've added another staple into our garden, but this is one that we need to find a happy medium with. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if I don't see another piece of bok choy for the next six months, I will be a happy man. So, um, (laughs) you know, it just, it is what it is, you know, and that's something that like, I wanted to grow something different. The garden provided it. And so we adapted to what we were able to eat and it worked out well, got a little old. Mm-hmm, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Just not a lot of recipes for it. <laughs> but at the same time, it is what it is. So, um, bok choy wilts like spinach, though. Like you had a whole lot of it, but what did you end up with a teaspoon or something of it? No, you actually, <laughs> it, you actually it doesn't wilt as bad as spinach. So, mm-hmm. one meal for three of us, and I do require a little bit more food than everybody else. We would eat two heads per meal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so oh, yeah you did have a lot of it then yeah and so we ate it i think i grew 30 heads of bok choy and there's like two left out there and i'm looking at them I'm like i've never wanted a pest to attack something so bad in my life <laughs> just like take it i uh I, maybe i'll add it remind me to add it to our our goals loosely next year um Bok choy is not as cold hardy as some of the other vegetables. Right. I really love, you know, picking it out of my garden, bringing it inside. Um, But by the time I get out there when it's time to grow it, it's just one of those pain in the butt crops because it's one of those that the white moth attacks. And so, like, I just need like a whole tarp. Remember the show that she said you you hate it, but, you know, I love all of those kind of shows under the dome. Like I need some kind of dome over my entire garden. (laughs) Only let good pollinators in, um, which I've actually been picking um, uh, little bitty worms off of my transplants that are on my back porch that have been hardening off for like far too many weeks. So anyway, yeah. So, you know, my Um, new washing station I have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's working fabulous, by the way, everybody, in case it you didn't know. It looks wonderful. Um, I, I went out there and I harvested four heads of cabbage the other day. Did not take pictures of them well, um, yeah. because they were ate up with some uh, cabbage loopers. Uh, uh, so I was I was thankful that I had this washing station because I was out there scrubbing the cabbage, getting all the guts off of them and stuff. I was like, yeah, these can come in looking purdy, but uh, they ain't too purdy right now. But um, I will. The amount of uh, green worms that I've found as I've in my kitchen sink as I've been yeah. cleaning some vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So, all right, everybody, come check us out on Facebook. And um, if you're on the Facebook group, show us what you're eating. Give us a picture. This is be one of the few times I ask for people's food pictures because I hate them. But I think this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, check us out on Patreon. We just released our first garden update of the year or you can get it on apple subscriptions so we will be doing our garden updates which are packed full of information we're basically talking about what is going on in our gardens and troubleshooting each other's stuff basically throughout these episodes there's a lot of knowledge hidden within each garden update yes ma'am there's laughter there's joy there are tears yes virtual hugs and then on occasionally there's garden stuff occasionally (laughs) And um, other than that, everybody, 
Just do one thing. Continue to learn to grow and grow for change. See ya. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.